Your reasons for listening to this show, well, those are your own. But just keep in mind that the views, information, or opinions expressed on the Tuttle Daily Podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of our sponsors. Yeah, it's called free speech, people. Nobody's forcing you to listen. Get ready for your daily dose of Tuttle. Uh, the all-time greatest uh, intern slash producer we've ever had, of course, Tuttle. Tuttle in Florida. From the Hobo Fish Camp, it's the Tuttle Daily Podcast. No wonder nobody likes you, Tuttle. Everything's a goddamn debate. Greetings and welcome to another edition of the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hope you guys are enjoying your day so far. Make sure you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Tuttle. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button because when you hit that bell button, you're going to get alerted to any time I go live or upload any new content. Before I get into what I want to talk about in this first segment, I got two great interviews coming up later on in today's show. But uh, I want to thank my newest sponsor, Ian Hanna, ianhannahomes.com. If you're in the market to buy or sell a house, or even if you know a friend that's one to buy or sell a house, make sure you go to ianhannahomes.com. He he serves the uh, Flagler, Volusia, Brevard areas. He is a a whiz when it comes to drone footage. And I talk about this all the time when I talk about Ian Hanna, is that one of the most important things that you want in the state of Florida is you want to make sure that the house you buy has a great roof. And what a better way. There is no better way then drone footage. So do yourself a favor. Check out ianhannahomes.com. And if you do, tell them you heard about it on the Tuttle Daily Podcast. So today I tried, or yesterday I tried something new. And I wanted to just kind of let you guys know what the new schedule that I'm doing. Nothing's really changing. I'm just adding more content for your enjoyment. So the daily audio podcast is going to be available for you in the mornings. Then at 11 a.m., myself and Charlie Alamo will be doing like a 45-minute to an hour just actual radio show. Charlie has a studio. He's playing audio. We're starting and stopping, giving our comments, just doing an hour. Where you know It's kind of like what Ron and Fez used to do with the fastest hour in radio. And then I'm also going to do my nightly live stream at 8 p.m. So I just wanted to tell you guys right now, it might not be consistent. You got to understand my dad's memorial party is coming up on October 9th. I've been getting ready for that. We got a lot of family coming over. My mom wants me to make sure that the yard looks nice and neat so nobody bitches or complains. I've been scrubbing the carpet by hand with a brush and then wiping it up with dirty towels and stuff. So, yeah, I've been pretty goddamn busy. Plus, I've been having to make sure, like, I'm not going to read off of a piece of paper, but I am going to say a few words at my dad's service. And I just want to just, you know, just memories. I have so many of them. And I just want to pick out the best of the best. I've been working on this photo or photography uh, collage. And that is what I've been doing. But after the ninth, I, I, it's going to be set, locked in stone. Daily audio podcast, show at 11 and live stream at 8. Going to get into the first segment of today's show. Uh, I talked to Frank. Frank is an artist. He came up with a few characters, one of them called Potman. And I was supposed to do this interview like even a month earlier, but he no called, no showed me. And nine times out of 10, I, if you no call, no show, I, I don't ever want to talk to you again. Like, I understand that stuff happens. I understand that people get busy, but if you can't make it, just call, tell me you can't make it and I'll be fine with that. But I decided to give Frank a chance and the interview was not going that great. So just to give you a little inside uh, info, I was trying to make him as uncomfortable as I could. I mean, he seems like a great guy. Just, you know, it was just a little uncomfortable. So uh, coming up right now, it is the interview with Frank the Artist. 
Welcome back to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Uh, I got a great interview coming up. And uh, it kind of, I, I was supposed to do this uh, probably a couple of weeks ago, but uh, something ended up happening. And uh, on the line with me right now is Frank Altamari. Did I get it right or did I screw it up? You got it right. Tuttle, hi. How are you? Well, uh, thank you for having me here. I'm doing wonderful. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, but I really, if I'm just being honest, I'm not trying to be rude. But like I, I was like, well, you know, he's early, but like we waited that one time and, and you never showed up on me. I don't know uh, yeah. if it was like a scheduling conflict or what it, what happened. It was. There. I really I honestly thought that it was at uh, five o'clock Eastern time. And um, part of I had asked the question about that. But um, yeah. Well, no worries, but, Frank. No, no worries, Frank. Now, Frank, tell, tell my audience a little bit about yourself and, and what you do. Well, I'm a professional fine artist, and uh, what I do is <laughs> a little bit of everything, because I guess that's who I am. I, I'm also a caregiver, my girlfriend. That's kind of... Oh, a uh, caregiver to your girlfriend. Like, what, what do you mean? I mean, a lot of men are caregivers to their other half, so I'm just saying, is there, is there like, I mean, I, I, I mean, if you don't want to talk about it, I mean, completely well, understand, but like, what do you no, mean by caregiver? Good. No, I'd, I'd love to share because it's, it's good information because apparently one out of four Americans has a diagnosable mental illness. And I, uh, that's me. I myself have uh, anxiety and um, I did slip into some depression because of trying to take care of uh, my girlfriend and her family, but that was solved. And now I'm doing much better and everybody's doing better. So what, what helped you out? Were you self-medicating at all? Like that, that was my problem. I, well, I self-medicated. <laughs> Well, my, my girlfriend, uh, her mom has one of the most severe mental disorders, bipolar and uh, borderline. Schizophrenic? No? Um, no, no, but, but still, this is pretty bad because... No, uh, I know it is. Back, back in the day, they, they even tried to use electric therapy on her, which gave her mm -hmm. nightmares for the rest of her life. She passed away last year at 88. God bless Sorry her. about that. But, uh, I, I, I said, sorry about that. My dad just passed you. away three months ago. So. But my girlfriend's family, uh, my girlfriend, her mom, her, her <laughs> sister, her son, one of her sons, you know, also has this severe debilitating mental illness where um, type of bipolar where reality would go out the window. So it becomes a, a very dangerous situation. And the people this, this, this associated type, you know, yeah, not, the very people different. closest to them usually become instantly the enemy. And it usually just, this doesn't end well. It usually ends with the person trying to commit suicide. And Susie actually destroyed me by multiple suicide attempts, trying to down her, her medications. Yeah. I tried to hang myself from a ceiling fan, but it ripped out of the roof. <sighs> yeah. My father actually killed himself. Yeah, no, listen, I'm not, look, I, the, the only, I, I, I'm, look, I'm not making light of it, but life is just so hard. If you don't laugh, you will go, you will drive yourself crazy. So, you know, I'm not trying to make light of it, but, you know, like. That's, uh, that's kind of like, hey, isn't that why I'm here to try to tell people that I'm, I'm making light of a very uh, bad situation. The bad situation is that we haven't utilized cannabis for the last 80 years. And my mm -hmm. characters, in a way, uh, break the ice because they are cartoon characters and maybe some people don't get it but um hot is, is is about as harmful as cartoon characters yeah man i couldn't agree with you more um because i was taking uh illegal drugs drinking myself like i i would already be like eight or ten shots of vodka in before 10 a.m working on the morning radio show that i worked on and they, I'm completely clean. I'm off of all the uh, mood stabilizing drugs. And the only thing that I do is smoke pot. Now, let me ask you. That's great. A quick I'm, question. Not any, I'm not in any pharmaceuticals either. Yeah, but a lot of people say that I can't claim to be sober because I still smoke pot. What, what do you how do you feel about that? Well, I guess I don't know. I mean, I'm a little bit on the fence um, regarding it's a drug, but because um, it's such a natural substance. Even doctors say, well, it fits our receptors better than any Western medicine. How, how could this, you know, why, why aren't we utilizing it? But what about uh, psychedelics like uh, mushrooms? I'm not talking about like acid, are, but, but I'm mushrooms definitely have a purpose um, for, for um, human uh, consumption for health. And also, I guess the, uh, the, uh, the, the psilocybin and whatever for uh, some type of 
um, the psychedelic, yeah. Yeah, the microdosing, they say, has really been helping people out. Yes, um, microdosing mushrooms, microdosing cannabis oil are high. What about DMT? You ever tried DMT or no? No, I, I'm kind of a, a nerd. I've never done crack. I've never done ecstasy. I've never done meth. I've never done any. Uh, well, I've done all those except crack. So <laughs> um, I've done I've done a few, though. I've done, you know, in, in, when I was a teenager, you know, sniffs and coke. And, yeah. But, uh, you know, the, uh, it just proves that I'm I'm 56 now, and and pot's not a gateway because I've been content with with pot my entire life. Yeah, but it has gotten stronger though, right? Through the years, I I mean, compared to I, what I it guess, was probably back in I the guess, day. I guess, but um, you know, it's up to what at top 30 percent THC now, and mm. right, roughly, you know, if you can. You get... ever smoke wax before, like any of the like high yeah. concentrate? No. Yeah, I tried it, but I'm I'm not a fan because I feel that. It will destroy your tolerance, and then you're not going to get high from smoking. Yeah, it does. It really, really does, man. So if I, you're not going to get high, what's the sense? I mean, there's, I mean, for for people that smoke, but and that's mm -hmm. again, this is only less than one percent of the population that have this um, mental dependence, not physical addiction to smoking pot. Which means nine out of ten people in the world will never become dependent on it. So when people say the world's going to pot, they don't know what they're talking about. No, I mean, I remember in my early 20s, my mom was going through chemo and stuff. And I remember uh, the first time, like, I just saw her getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier from not eating and, and working at a radio station. I got uh, a, a quarter from one of the guys I worked with and and, and it helped her. It helped her uh, keep on the weight. And plus, she deals with central tremors now. And when she smokes, uh, she's straight as an arrow. Like, she could do surgery on somebody. Yeah, uh, I think we could be here for the rest of the show talking about how we know people who uh, how cannabis has helped them. But um, my personal story is also, I think, part of my part of my entire story, which is pretty significant. I got bit up by red bugs this weekend, and like my, uh, I don't mean to be graphic or whatever, but my testicles have swollen up and everything. Do you think marijuana would help the inflammation at all, or maybe like CBD? You know, um, well, I, I'm. Yeah, I mean the the cannabis oil uh, mm -hmm. is uh, the, one of the best anti-inflammatory substances available mm -hmm. because it's it, uh, there's nothing really in the Western medicine market except this hydrocortisone the only thing you can buy and cannabis is twice as good as that. Yeah, because when I was a kid, I got red bugs one time and my mom had to paint my uh, testicles with fingernail polish and and it was. Uh, Oh my God. Very, very traumatizing. You know, I was only in the first or second grade. You know, it was harmless. I mean, it wasn't anything like, you know, weird. It was just like, you know, everybody says you put fingernail polish on red bugs, you know, uh, chiggers. Uh, they also call them chiggers. And, and that's, I said chiggers. I didn't say a bad word. C H I G G E R S. Not, you know, because with cancel culture now, you got to be careful there. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, um, I hear that. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to be. No, I let it rip here. <laughs> let it rip here, man. Listen, we can talk about whatever we want to, you know, like, all right, let me ask you, though. Um, uh, so do it, uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I just wanted to say that it wasn't entirely cannabis oil that um, solved my girlfriend's mental health. It was it was Western medicine, but cannabis oil can replace approximately 70 percent, I believe, of 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 over-the-counter medicines but um so so you said you're an artist like have you gotten into the whole nft thing you know uh the the non-fundable uh, token type deal like the digital art and stuff like that yeah thanks to my girlfriend's son um who's the kind of ip guy mm -hmm. yeah he is an ip guy <laughs> uh yeah him and Susie helped me start um computers because i really wasn't into didn't want to get involved i never had um the um the, the old facebook that was um people are making some big money off of it though MySpace, people are making right? i never had a myspace account but no you didn't yeah it wasn't until 2012 when i started facebook and then i started through like i said the help of michael and susan i started a facebook page called legalized Potman. And that's what started it all, because once I had a Facebook page, Legalized Pop Man, I guess these algorithms who, you know, bubble you in your own bubble, 
sent me information from other similar pages. And that's how I became educated about the, edu about the everything plant. And then I coined the phrase, they lied about everything, about the everything plant. Because after being educated, you know, I felt so vindicated. And, and, and um, I, I mean, I couldn't explain how, how interesting it was to find out just the opposite was true about a plant that's been demonized, right? Our do you think it do you think it's gotten legalized because of big tobacco, big alcohol, not wanting competition, as well as the hemp industry taking away other businesses? No, it's been, I stuff? think it's just becoming legalized because it's been a fight forever. And there's been a lot of good people that have been forcing the issue. Like for example, um hemp became legal in 2018, but do people know about it? No. I mean, that's because uh the media and and the politicians never said, hey, hemp's legal now. I mean, after all, prohibition in 1937 was never about getting high. It was about suppressing hemp. Hemp mm -hmm. pieces, I mean, I mean, destroys the competition for all the big corporations. In well, so that's, well, pro that's why they crushed it. Prohibition started the mafia. So, I mean, organized crime anyway. So, I mean. Well, prohibition destroyed everything. <laughs> well, I mean, it's. it's, it's, it's I can relate. It's, Sorry. It's it's one of the only amendments that has has ever been turned overturned in the United States, I think. Right. I As far as I know, I think prohibition of alcohol was the only amendment that we've ever like overturned in our country's history. As far as I know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry. I, I'll go um, with you on that. <laughs> yeah. 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 So now. All right. So. All right. So you got you got the weed stuff. You're you're getting into the NFTs and stuff like uh, like what what is the uh, most you ever made from selling a piece of artwork? Oh, that's a good question. Um, because. Because what happened was when I was 16 years old, I saw the Budweiser cartoon character Budman and I thought to myself, how come there's no pop man? So I created pop man. Mm. And um, then I created Coke Man, Acid Man, Mesk Man, Mushroom Man, Keg Man. <laughs> what about Fentanyl Man? He wasn't around back in the uh, in the early '80s. This is about 1981. What about Meth Man? Meth Man sounds pretty cool no, too. No, about never heard of meth until recently as well. But um, really, yes. well, there was meth. Well, I guess whatever. Anyway. Well, I mean, I. I, I mean, I used to take Adderall. That's basically legal meth. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, mm. it's weird. Uh, do you know, like, I've been reading about a lot about animals. You know, even animals eat fermented fruit to get high or drunk, you know? So even even animals, you know, people forget we're nothing but, like, uh, evolved animals and stuff. Uh, so they're even getting, you know, messed up on, on substances as well. Yeah, but I don't think animals do it to get messed up. I think animals do it to sustain and when there might be a level of where they say oops maybe i don't want to get messed up or maybe they surpassed it by accident i i don't know man i i talked about a story yesterday uh on well every animal's different every animal's different as well i guess well, well i mean there i talked about a story yesterday uh about the bronx zoo about uh two gorillas giving each other oral sex and i'm like that's not something that animals do they're supposed to just like reproduce and stuff and yeah like, but, it, but, but, but look what we we're talking about they're closest to humans than any other animal yeah i don't know man i i really do think primates get high i i, I really really do i i think they <laughs> they they fiend for some drugs mm, well uh maybe um, all right well frank yeah, I know. Well, Frank, tell everybody how they can once again check out your website, Facebook, all that good stuff. Okay, well, I started Legalized Pop Man in uh, 2012, um, but I soon, becoming after becoming educated, changed the name to Utilize Pop Man. So I've had Utilized Pop Man for about nine years now, since 2012. And um, now I've also run six other Facebook pages, including 420 Healthy Way and Cannabis Sustainability, um, Pop Man and Courteous Cannabis. Courteous Cannabis is Pop Man's sidekick. He's a, he's a cannabis leaf. Mm -hmm. and, what about uh, like uh, Bong Boy can be a sidekick, like Bong Boy. I, I think Bong Boy, you know, like Batman has Robin. Can't Pop Man have Bong Boy? 
No, no, Potman definitely has courteous cannabis. And you could oh, okay. say, and you might say that courteous cannabis has Potman. <laughs> Mm, I I mean I there there's a lot of stuff. What about oh, instead of uh bong boy? What about blunt boy? Like blunt, you know, like blunt boy. I think that would be badass too. You you know if you can get two letters uh for a thing like blunt, but everybody loves rhyming. That blunt sounds boy like, or bong boy. That sounds like some good uh future storyline. Well, all right. Well, listen, you can have that one for free. I I don't <laughs> want any royalties or anything out of that. Uh, now, is, uh, one quick question before I go. Is all your stuff trademarked, like uh, your your characters and stuff? Yeah, I copyrighted Potman back in 1986, and, I, and then I had to recopyright him because I, I guess that expired. Yeah. Uh, and cut in 86 was kind of too true to the, to the cause. <laughs> yeah, I bet the Walt Disney Company will come after it and try to buy up our, you know, if that trademark expired, they may... Well, hell, they could be listening to this right now because I live in Central Florida. Hell, they may steal Blunt Boy from me. Uh, they have me on file because I tried to be an artist there. Well, well, I mean, well, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I, I hear, I almost know where the location of Walt Disney's Frozen Head is uh, on location. So maybe, maybe we can get you a face to face with uh, Walt Disney's Frozen Head. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, all right, Frank. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable up there. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm in one of those moods today. No, I'm you're not, kind of not uncomfortable. Weird. Not uncomfortable at all. Let me just say real quick that, um, that patience and persistence paid off in my relationship, and um, ultimately, it's the last five years have been so spectacular because, like I said, it paid off. Uh, sticking it out. Um, first, uh, she fell between the cracks with her health care, and then she got a proper medication, which helped with her mental illness. And then, because we both smoked cigarettes for 30 years, and we both had COPD, we um, found um, that uh, cannabis oil helps with COPD. Microdosing cannabis oil after the first year, um, the, one of the unexpected results was she lost 50 pounds because cannabis acts like a uh, module has modulating effects just like nikola tesla had patented in 1926 the uh -huh. modulator so that means if you're underweight it'll help you gain weight if you're overweight help you lose weight so without changing her lifestyle she lost 50 pounds first year but then she kind of plateaued and then she went to the gym and it was just not it wasn't any gym it was orange theory where it was a one hour intense workout and guess what she was wearing oxygen 24 hours a day before that and mm -hmm. then a year of cannabis oil and losing the weight she didn't even need the oxygen anymore, and she was able to work out without her oxygen dropping, which was a miracle because at her pulmonologist's office, she couldn't walk down the hallway without mm -hmm. her oxygen dropping, you know, before, before taking and, uh, and And, and, and I, oh, well, this is something I want to ask, you know, like you've been, you've been, you've been being our caretaker, you know, and your wife and everything. And, and like, if you don't want to answer this, I completely understand, but like, you know, husband and wife, you know, when you get to a certain age, sex life is not, but, but like, How's a romantic life or, 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 you know, intimacy dealing with all the issues and stuff, you know, because I, I think that is an issue with relationships. Absolutely. Absolutely. And especially when you have someone with a uh, mental illness, because um, that person is not the same person when they are ill and it might cause some deficits in, in, in scars of, of pain, <laughs> you know what I mean? For the brain. But, um, it's nothing that counseling couldn't help with. And, you know, um, I, I would, I would say I'm happy and we're both happy in the way things are. And, and uh, cause I met a couple of chicks when I was in the mental institution that, that I ended up, uh, you know, dating for a little bit. And I gotta tell you some of the best, um, <laughs> sex I ever had in my life. If you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Frank, man. Well, I appreciate the conversation. I got to get back out here and catch some fish because, you know, that's my side hustle. I sell fish to minorities here in Florida. All right. Well, let me just the best. Well, let me so plug tell real everybody. quick. Let me play a yeah, plug real quick. My website, which is potman.us. Any mm -hmm. us is a legitimate U.S. business. So check out the website and um, check out my artwork. All right, Frank, man. Hey, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I really appreciated uh, this interview. Tuttle, thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, interviewing me. <laughs> All right, Frank, you have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. All right, bye. Welcome back to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. 
I got a great interview lined up, especially with everything that's been going on in my life. Uh, on the line with me right now is Soma. Soma, how do you pronounce your last name? Aro. Aro? Aro. So, okay. Uh, Aro. Well, Soma, how are you doing today? Where, where are you calling from? I'm really good. Thanks. It's really great to be here. I'm based in the UK in Portsmouth. Portsmouth, what? UK. What? What what part of uh, the United Kingdom is that in in England? Is it south, north, middle? It's uh, kind of in the middle south. Okay, see, because I'm I I went to the United Kingdom a couple of times and and I love it because I'm a I'm a big football fan. For, but for my American listeners, not American football. I'm talking about soccer. You know, I know the the Brits and stuff hate it when people call it soccer. It's 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 football over there. I'm a big uh, Manchester United fan. So I, when I was married, me and my wife went to a couple of uh, the matches while we were there. Had an amazing time. Even went to Cardiff. Uh, what, what do you think about the people from Wales? I think they're all funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've gotten that from a, a few people when I've talked to uh, Brits and stuff. Um, but uh, Soma, before we get into the interview, tell 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 my audience a little bit about yourself, how they can check you out, where they can find you online. OK, great. Um, well, first of all, let me say it's great to be here and to connect with you. So um, I'm a bit of an oddball. I've always been a black sheep, uh, you know, one of the black sheep of my family, um, mm -hmm. been the odd one out, always had a lot of um spiritual experiences as a child i just had hundreds of them so i'm known as a psychic a medium um i do a lot of different um modalities really healing reiki a shamanic practitioner what about sound um, therapy what about like sound therapy because no, i've done no, i've done do that a little bit therapy. oh have you yeah no yeah. i don't do sound therapy i wasn't trained in I have a terrible voice. Um, well, what I'm talking about is uh, my good friend, Addie. Um, she She's uh, into astrology and all that good stuff. And she uh, does the tuning fork. You know, like, I don't know if you've ever heard that, you know, like uh, healing properties on certain parts of the body with sound and stuff. Um, yeah, it, it really, really helps. Of, of yeah i'm well aware of the sound forks and the tuning forks and toning and sound healing and, and the crystal bowls and and some of those are just amazing amazing and i i've been to some sound baths where you you do it overnight where the 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 group leader will just play for for hours on end and it's so healing just to lay in there and soak up the the sounds and the, and the tones and the music mm -hmm. Now, Soma, did um, is this something you've always had? You know, was speaking of being a psychic medium, did something happen to you that maybe like made you more in tune, or is it just something you've always had? Well, I would have had a lot of trauma as a as a child, so extreme trauma. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm a survivor right. of childhood trauma as well okay. too. So. Yeah, I, it's tough going. I mean, I had trauma, poverty, rape, an alcoholic mum. I became pregnant through the rape at the age of 12 and wanted to end things at the age of 12. Was literally on the verge of committing suicide when I had an out of body experience with Jesus. Been there, been there, he, been there. I, I, I tried to commit suicide as well, too. Wow, that's that's tough going. Yeah. Um, the thing that was unusual for me is that I had an out of body experience when I was literally on the verge of committing suicide at the age of 12 after being raped and um, being pregnant and losing the baby. So I have, I have can, had, can, I'm, I'm sorry, can, 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 can I jump in? I, I, and, and this is just a question though, like it's horrible that, that you were sexually assaulted uh but do you also i mean losing the baby do you do you kind of, because i always try to look at things uh glass full instead of uh, uh half empty you know what i'm saying 
So, like, losing the baby, I know that must have been traumatic as well, too, but at the same time, I don't know. Like, how were you, how did you feel after when you lost the baby? Relieved. Okay. I yeah, I'm relieved. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I wasn't trying to be insensitive, but I mean, I, I could, it I could think. It cost me anything. No, I, I just, I just didn't know, like, because, you know, here uh, in Texas, uh, well, I don't live in Texas, but here in the United States in Texas, they just passed um, an abortion ban, even for incest and rape. And I, I think that's absolutely horrible. Yeah, that is, that is not that that's that's wow. Wow. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't think anyone who's who's been raped or um, become pregnant through through rape should be a have should be forced to have the child i think that's inhumane yeah but at the same time even if the child is born you know the child is innocent and everything but i could also see where mother would you know every time they would look at that child it would be like a reminder of what happened yeah it would i mean that that's the recipe for disaster that's a recipe for dysfunction for drug abuse for crime for alcohol there's a whole number of issues that will arise for both the parent and the child. Is is alcoholism a? I've read a lot. Alcoholism a, a big problem in the United Kingdom. Um, it is. I think it's a problem everywhere. Some countries like Ireland have it. Have it. It's more predominant in the Irish and Celtic culture. Ireland, Scotland, Northern Ireland, or just Ireland. Um, I think just Ireland. Yeah, North and South. Yeah. Now, so the, 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 do you think that this trauma that happened to you at a young age made you more like in tune with the spirit and the psychic world? Yeah. I mean, when I was 12, I had my out of body experience with Jesus that, that changed my whole perspective, understanding it changed my life really because it are we talking jesus life. as in jesus like in the bible jesus like you know people people you know like believe in different gods and stuff so i i was just curious well i think the jesus in the bible never existed i think that the, the real jesus who i met i had darker skin um mm -hmm. and so but yes it was him did he say it was jesus like or did you just assume he was jesus um yes he said it was jesus and i knew it was him yeah mm -hmm. and now okay well so give me an idea of what a psychic medium does you know because a lot of people have you know like thoughts or opinions on what they are about a lot of people think it's just you know bs and stuff tell tell me a little bit about what a psychic medium is well i think most people are familiar with what a psychic medium is um sometimes the people seem to mix up or confuse um what a psychic is and, and think it's a medium a medium is someone who connects in with spirit and a psychic is someone who um, gets messages in, in a different way so that they get messages, but it's not from spirit. It's it could be through dreams or intuition or words or visions or images or psychometry or photograph readings. Mm -hmm. um, now, are you able to speak with spirit? So. Yes, I do mediumship. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so like, does that take a toll on you? Because I feel like you maybe take a little bit of that weight on your shoulders with spirits. Are all spirits angry or are they like good, bad? Like, uh, give me an idea. Well, when someone passes away, they're very often um, the same as they were when they were here, when they were alive. So, and you've got a multitude of people that are happy, sad, grumpy, you know, a multitude of, of different mind states, as depression, sadness, euphoria. 
drug takers, alcohol, you know, um, victims, perpetrators. So I've, I've worked with pretty much everything, um, every type of spirit I've worked with. Um, yeah, I mean, people are pretty much, you know, when they pass away, they're pretty much the same. It can take a while for them to adjust, for them to change, for them to grow, for them to learn to adapt, to mm. learn and adapt, sorry. Well, um, why are they still here, though? Like, are they, like, in purgatory? Why haven't they gone to the other side? Like, would, would I, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm curious. Well, sometimes it can take a while for people to, it, it's like moving up, a lift it takes a while to move up the different levels mm -hmm. hmm. see because I, I mean i'm just asking my um my father just passed away like four months ago so i uh you know it, it's it's just something very very interesting and and i'm up front with you uh that i am not a um i mean i i i believe in astrology you know I think it does make people better people, you know, but I'm also I, I'm not a religious person. I I really don't believe in religion. Um, I do believe that there is a higher power and stuff, but I don't know if per se if it's a God or, you know, whatever it is, if that makes sense. Well, first of all, I'm really sorry to hear about your dad. Thank you. And how were you coping with it? Um, when, whenever it first happened, um, I think I was more in shock. I really didn't have a lot of emotion on it. I also think, you know, the way that I was raised in the South, cause I'm in Florida. My dad was a very, you know, strong man, man's man, your stereotypical man. You know, I'd only seen him cry once in my life. And that was when his brother passed away, actually eight months before him. Um, but I knew my dad always wanted me to be tough. Uh, and I was trying to be there for my mom, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and be strong. But now as time's passed on, you know, like little things, you know, just little reminders, you know, it, it'll set me off, but I, I don't do it in front of my mom, you know, like I'll go somewhere and, 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 and have a cry on my own, you know? Yeah, I, um. Oh, my mum died um, about five years ago, and I thought I knew what grief was before that, and I had no idea. And no. when my mum died, because of all my abuse as a child, I ended up with, just because she died, I ended up with um, PTSD, which is very common for people that have had trauma when a parent dies or the abuser dies. The, the, the victim of the abuse can end up with PTSD which is what happened to me. And I was just very overwhelmed and, and can, grief stricken. Can I, can I, can I, uh, let's back up a little bit. Uh, uh, did you know the person that sexually assaulted you? Um, yes, I did. I was abused several times, several times um, between the ages of, of eight that I can remember and 16. But I was also abused when I was in the cot as well from a very, very young age. And did you um, because I know that I did, did you self-medicate with like drugs or alcohol um, to cope with it? No, no, I didn't. What, what got me through it was my connection to spirit. And I've always been aware of spirit. So at the times of the abuse, I would often leave my body and connect with spirit including my own loved ones, like my granddad, who was in spirit and my granny. So that that's how I got through it. But I did do the whole drugs and drink from about 16, 17, 17, really, until about 23. Yeah. Um, did they end up arresting the person that did it? Or like, I, I, uh, I'm just, no. you know. No, not at all. Um, my mum gave me the option of um going to the police and sat me down and said to, you know they would question me and examine me and do all this and I was nine when she was was telling me this and I said no I didn't want to do that so so no none of them were arrested none of them were questions none of them some of them I, I never told people about 
at all. Um, Have you ever run yeah. into any of the, those people? Uh, yes. Yes, I have since, um, but years ago now, when I was in my 20s, I think, um, or late teens, my sister took me to um, the house of my friend's dad, who was one of the guys. And um, yeah, so I have met some of them since. And Did you no say anything to them? No, no, I was too scared. Um, yeah. A bit like a deer in the headlights. Yeah, I mean, I know, like, see, because the person that, well, you know, I, I don't really talk too much about mine because I'm just not ready, you know, um, to to talk about it openly. But I have had the encounter with the person that did it. And I basically told them, you know, I basically said, you know what you did, because I it was a, at a young age as well, too, for me. And I just said, you know. Uh, that person had called me and I said, I know what you did. And I just basically hung up. Wow. That's yeah. It can be tough going because we often, you know, we often don't get the, the, what we're needing of, of the acknowledgement that this happened and that, that, that we are victims of the abuse. We often don't get that acknowledgement from anyone, including our own families, who are very much in denial because they don't want to have to face the often the horrific situation or circumstances because then they'll could, have to deal with it. If you could get away with it, would you want revenge? No. No. Hmm. That's no. the thing about me. That's the thing about me because of my spiritual experiences. I saw things from a higher, a much higher perspective. And they will have their own karma. I, I mean, my, step, my stepfather has now he lost both his legs um, because, and, and, and God forgive me, but I do find it very funny because he went into an operation um, in a rural part of, of Ireland in the middle of nowhere. He went into a hospital um, in, oh, I forget the name of it now, but it's rural rural island and he went to have a leg removed and they they took the wrong leg off so then they oh. had to they had to remove the right one that um, would have been a hell of a payday i hope they i hope they uh sued the hell out of whoever made that mistake yeah i'm sure he did yeah I'm sure he did. the now you mentioned karma um i that's also another thing and 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 look i i i'm open to everything and, and i'm not like, I don't want you to take it like I think that I don't believe you and what you do. It's just you got to understand, like, I respect people's uh, opinion and what they believe and what they do. But uh, karma is also another thing that I have a hard time believing in. So you don't believe in karma? No, because, I mean, uh, good things happen to bad people all the time and bad things happen to good people all the time. Yeah, you're right. They do. They do. And um, my belief would be that, that that is karma carried over from a previous lifetime. So you believe in reincarnation? Then? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, now, I kind of I now I do believe in reincarnation as a certain point, because th this is what I believe spiritually. OK. Um, when I look up at the stars, because it has been proven that us as humans are made up of the same uh, atoms, the same elements that are in the stars. We're all made up of stardust. Yeah, I mean, we are. We, we all evolve from that. And when a sun dies, it's, it, it explodes and spews its guts back out into the universe. And all that material gets turned into other stars, other planets, and stuff like that. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. See, I, um, you know, like, I, I want to believe. All right, I'm also a man of science. I love science. And if you're a man of science, if you, you can't prove something doesn't exist, you can't say that it doesn't exist. So do, you, do, do you get what I'm saying? Like, if I can't prove that it doesn't exist, I can't say 
without a definitive answer and say that it doesn't? Well, it, I think it depends on the science that you're reading, because when you really look into the science of things, of, of the psychic world and the, the mediumship and spirit and the, the, and the laws of the universe and the nature of reality, and you look into the real science that's hidden from the mainstream, hidden from us as, as you know, the, the, the public on a mass scale, then, you know, that's the science I follow. That's the science I believe in. Hmm. All right. Well, I this has been a very eye-opening thing. Do you think that, like, maybe um, I can have you on again? Like, if we wanted to maybe do something, um, you know, about my dad, like if I sent a picture and some info and stuff like that, do you think you might be able to do something over the, the over an interview or is that something yeah. you would be interested in? Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd love to. I'd be delighted to do that for you because I do photograph readings, um, which actually happened by accident once. Um, and I realized I could do it. So, yeah, I'd love to do that for you. I'd, yeah, I'd no, really I'd, I'd be delighted. No, I, I just, you know, like, like I said, I, I don't want to spring it up on you right now, but I would like to have you on again to be, you know, like, you know, maybe we can, you know, if you can send my producer an email with all the info that like you need to be able to go to get a good reading, um, I'll get that for you and, 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 and a picture or something like that. Does it, does it need to be like a certain type of picture or a good memory? Does it need to be a picture of me and him together? Like, I don't know. No, just any pictures of him. Um, the, the closer he is to the camera, the better. Yeah, well, um, I'm making this collage so I can just take a picture of the collage that I've been making. Yeah. And, and does that would that have several pictures in it of yes, him? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. OK, that, that would be perfect. All right. So much. Tell people once again before you go um how they can uh check you out uh do you have a website how can they contact you thanks patrick i have um my website is the pleiadianchilds.com which is spelt p-l-e-i-a-d-i-a-n.com and i also have my book the pleiad well i actually have two books now and i'm doing my third one my first book is the pleiadian child by caroline noonan and if you go to my website, you'll also see um, all of my books there. All right. Well, once again, where are you calling from? What part or what city? I'm in Portsmouth in the UK. It's Portsmouth. on the South Coast. All right. Well, Soma, I really enjoyed this interview. Hopefully I didn't uh, offend you with any questions or anything like that. It's just, you know, I, I you know, like skeptics and stuff. I'm sure you get a lot of those questions and everything. And I, I think you did a great job. Oh, thanks, Patrick. I do. Um, yeah, I've I had to deal with a lot of skepticism when I was younger, so I've kind of learned how to navigate and not let it um, get me down. Well, Selma, it's been a pleasure speaking to you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. OK, thank you, Patrick. And you. And that's the show for today. Thanks for listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, don't be a dickhead. Do us a favor, like, share, and subscribe to the show. Also, check out the Tuttle category at 315live.com. The Tuttle Daily Podcast is brought to you by Starfire Transport, stitchyweb.com, and pocketbearclub.com. Special thanks to show producer Vulture and co-host Sirach. Show voiceover service is brought to you by jcvoiceover.com and The Little Cheese Show. Download and subscribe to The Little Cheese Show everywhere podcasts are found. If you want to help support the show, go to paypal.me slash Tuttle on the radio. You have something you want to say? Tuttle at gmail.com or leave a voicemail at 407-270-3044. To follow all Tuttle social media, go to Tuttle.net. That's Tuttle with two Ds dot net. Thanks again for all your support, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Tuttle Daily Podcast. I get ignorant in normal situations. What? What you mean? What the fuck you mean? What, what are you talking about? Nigga, what the fuck is you talking about? Oh, shit.